Hi everyone, today I want to show you just one thing that you can do with this beautiful floral panel die that is absolutely gorgeous but takes really no time at all. A little bit of fussy cutting involved, you can do this with plain cardstock. I'm going to add a little bit of ink but you really don't have to to get an amazing effect. Now I am going to be cutting right into my card base first of all, so I do need a larger format die cutting machine for this. For the larger card but you can probably get away with doing this into a smaller card and using your smaller kind of a5 style um die cutting machines size cutting machines so this is from the brand new wings and things collection from textures i'll make sure everything is linked down below for you and as i say i'm going to go away i'm just going to cut this panel which is one of two dies that come in the set because you do get the outline with it as well directly into my card base so I have just taped that down with some low tack tape so I'm going to go away and do that with my larger machine and then we'll get with the layering. So first layer's cut let's just release the tape from this I'm going to be very careful although it's a low tack tape they are brand new pieces of tape so I don't want them to tear the cardstock and as you can see a lot of the pieces have already fallen out there's absolutely no issues die cutting there at all with this die you do have some smaller areas in between the flowers that are kind of like they represent the stamen just here the small circles so I would suggest taking a pokey tool and making sure they are all popped out work your way around the die cut and just check that everything is popped away and then we'll move on to the next stage so if this summer you're thinking about making something like wedding invitation this is going to be absolutely perfect look how beautiful that is just cut into there on its own a simple sentiment over the top and you have got the most beautiful beautiful card but we are really going to emphasize this a lot okay so next my foliage color this is going to be a green i'm going to cut this out again now because the green i'm going to trim right to the edges so rather than using the enclosed outer border here i'm just going to cut it directly into a piece of cardstock like so and then trim around the edge myself so i can bring this right close up to the edge of my card i'm going to tape it down along these two edges and then cut it again cut it really really close I'm doing it this way because uh, my smaller die cutting machine is on my desk next to me here whereas my larger one is over the other side of my craft room so I'm a bit lazy I like to use the smaller one as much as possible so if I can fit anything through it by cutting down the excess cardstock I will so I'm going to put this green cardstock through here um, you'll be able to see now how beautifully this die cuts in real time I won't speed this bit up usually I would but let's go through once and then as I say I just double check it I mean it looks like it's all cut beautifully anyway I can't turn this 90 degrees in here I don't quite have the room because I'd be cutting into oh I might have actually I'll say that I might be able to just get enough off yeah I can put that through sorry there we go so just 90 degree turn it looks like it's all cut but I do like to just be sure let's run that through a second time and then let's release all these little pieces. So releasing the tape carefully because I want to keep this, reuse it as many times as possible. If you are strapped for time and you don't want to worry about having to pop too many pieces out of your die cut, this goes with any sort of cover plate like this. Um, if you bend your cardstock back as you peel it away, more of the pieces are going to stay within the die. If you just kind of take it off flat, more pieces are going to stay in the cardstock. So it's entirely up to you which way you do it, but I prefer this way if I don't need to use the die again. I mean, I do for this particular tutorial, but if I'm in a hurry, I'll come back and clean this later. And look at that, and nearly all the pieces are out. I've just got a few, like I say, the little bits that are inside the flowers mostly. I just need to pop out because they're so small they kind of hold on to themselves and you see that will fit absolutely beautifully over your card base if I just open that up there we go look how gorgeous that is now I am going to raise this up onto foam to give it even more dimension this is completely optional here in the UK I know we have a less expensive postage for uh, thicker items so we can afford to do this if you are in a country that uh, doesn't really allow you to send 
um, really thick, heavy, bulky items. Uh, it costs you a fortune in postage. Then, of course, you can just glue this part down flat. So for this, as always, I'm going to be using the Creative Craft Products Adhesive White Foam Sheets. These also come in black if you prefer that darker look, which is great if you want that extra dimension, the drop shadow there. There's three sheets in a pack. They last me quite a while because I save everything, even the pieces that fall out or rather stay in the die. Um, I, say, I save absolutely everything because they all come in handy. You can cut this down with scissors as well. You can punch it however you want to make your foam adhesive shapes and it's adhesive on both sides as well so i'm going to run this through with my die now a tip for die cutting foam is that you only die cut it the once you never run it back through in the same way as i did with the cardstock i'll show you exactly that and i'll try to explain why as well so with foam it doesn't embed into the die in the same way as cardstock does as you're die cutting that so as we're coming out the other end of the die cutting machine here what's happening is the plates lift up you probably know your plates will separate slightly um, and sort of push apart your foam and your die are doing the same thing so your foam is lifting up out of the die it doesn't as I say it doesn't embed into the die the same way as cardstock does so if you take this out the other end and I'll just grab this end and show you what I mean if I can so hopefully you can see there the foam has lifted from the die if we were now to bring this round and put it back through again there's a very good chance that foam is going to have moved on the die because it's not sitting in the die it's sitting on the die it will have moved you're going to get that double cut effect um, that is just a nightmare so now to adhere my green panel to this so peeling off the top layer and I'm just going to adhere this panel on top. It's a good idea to just take one flower and press some, looking at this one down the bottom, I'm going to press my thumb into that one down exactly where it needs to be, directly over the top, making sure all the edges are in the right place for this. And then look over the other side, do the same, just, just sort of focus on one or two lines and then one in the middle, keeping everything else lifted. And everything should all fall into place there. Beautiful. Okay, perfect. So now I've got my raised up panel. I can peel off the backing and I can adhere it to my card as well. Look at that. It's looking beautiful already. Okay, now to really get this dimension going, I'm going to recut this twice from white cardstock. Okay, now to really get layering. So the first layer that I'm going to do with this white panel, and I haven't worried about the edges, they're very roughly cut because we're going to snip a lot of that away. We are going to snip into this and snip out all of the foliage. So the foliage is going to be seen through, so we see this green. So from this panel, you want to also um, go round the edge, the very edge here. So let's start along this line. That is a piece of foliage, so I'm going to snip up against the flower petal, the same here, and the same here. So all of this is foliage, so this is all going to come away the same just here. Now, at the end of this petal here, I've got a flower, so I'm going to leave that snip around the flower. So at the minute, we have two types of flowers. We have these small little star um, white ones and we have the larger like lilies here. So I am including both of these at the moment within the uh, snipping. So let's take this foliage off here. Again, this is another one of those quite therapeutic um, techniques. I, I like to sit and do this in front of the TV or with something on in the background that I can listen to. So there's my first part and this is going to lay over just like so. So just laying that there, I'll glue that down in a moment because I'm going to continue with the other florals that are left in here. Now I'm going to glue these on but I am going to just add a little bit of shape to a few of the petals. These are petals that don't have anything adjoining them so the of these larger flowers. I'm not really going to do the smaller flowers, that kind of gets a bit too fiddly. So it's really starting to come together. We'll do more of a reveal and open the card in a moment because we've got one last layer to do. For this one, I'm going to bring in a Distress Oxide, just a tiny little stencil brush and the smallest amount. Now, I don't want this to be too dark, so on a scrap piece of paper, 
I'm going to brush off excess and I'm just going to brush this bright sort of yellow green colour into the centre of these florals here. The tiniest little amount just like so. Now I've only done that on the larger ones as well. It's just enough to give you another colour and really lift it up. So now I'm this time I'm just going to snip out the larger flowers, these ones that I've inked. Now each one of these is going to have that curling treatment on the petals and I'm really going to lift these ones up. So a lot more than I just did because we're doing all the petals on each of the flowers. On the underneath of each petal I'm also going to add a foam pad and that's right where that curl is to really keep it lifted up. And again glue in the very centre just avoiding those holes there. Making sure you keep that shape I'm going to adhere this down over the top of the flower and it doesn't matter if the petals offset slightly it's actually quite a nice look so I've just given that a slight twist. The foam pads will keep those petals from lifting up too much. There we go, beautiful. So I'm just going to work my way round one, two, three, four more flowers. So there's the final card. If I open that up, you can really see that dimension through there. It looks absolutely beautiful. It's just one die that I've used throughout the whole card, just layering that up, a little bit of inking, some snipping, and yeah, it looks absolutely beautiful. As I say, wedding cards, if you wanted to take your time to create invitations like this, they'll be time consuming, but so worth it. But otherwise, if you're actually sending a card to somebody whose wedding it is, whose birthday it is, whose anniversary it is, get well soon, thank you, Mother's Day, whatever it may be, this is going to suit so many different occasions. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, please do make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel just here and you'll find more tutorials from this collection, Textures, Wings and Things, on a playlist just here. Take care, everybody, and I'll see you again very soon.